Great, thanks a lot. Pleasure to speak in such a beautiful venue. Um, okay, my uh, brief and crisp presentation is a uh, little effort I like to call, we need a new word for neologism. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of a uh, climate change snowstorm of some dangerous words, which may or may map on, may or may not map onto some dangerous ideas. Uh, to name something is to own it, yeah, sorta. Uh, but even if you do get it spun, you still have to get it done. So, you know, I'm a science fiction writer. I like to name things that don't exist yet and which I certainly don't own. If you saw my book, Shaping Things, uh, it's got all kinds of neologisms in it, spimes, orphids, blobjects, wranglers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't want to plug that book. You've got it already. I actually want to plug this book. <laughs> this is uh, Alex's book, uh, which is not just the book of the year, but the book of next year. This book is the cat's future pajamas ladies and gentlemen. Wow, okay, so back to my arcane yet oddly compelling semantic difficulties. All right, you know, as Kevin Kelly said earlier, nobody is as smart as everybody. So I wanna talk about everybody's neologisms, which have something to do with my line of thinking. Okay, blobjects. What are blobjects? Well, you know, there are objects that are curvilinear and designed by computer-aided design. Blogjicks? What are blogjicks? Well, they're kind of like blobjicks, except they're, blo they're objects that can blog. They can make their presence known through electronic networks. Fabjicks. What are fabjicks? Fabjicks are objects produced by fabricators. What are fabricators? Well, they're rapid prototype machines. They're 3D printers. They're stereolithographers. They are sometimes known as realizers. Now, when I see a bog of synonyms like this, kind of a lot of terms overlapping, most people would think, oh, you know, that's vague, that's discouraging. No, I immediately head for those areas and I try to catalog what's going on, right? I'm actually intrigued by areas where it's clear that people don't yet know what they're talking about. Ubiquitous computing. Well, this is a 15-year-old term. It comes from Xerox PARC. It starts with the idea that you have a mainframe, you have a desktop, then the microprocessor becomes smaller and smaller, begins to filter out through the area, becomes ubiquitous. Ambient computing. It's ambient. They've already split up into very small pieces. They're kind of scattered around. We don't know they're there. We don't care that they're there. We're okay. They're okay. <laughs> Physical computing. It's about actuators. It's about we're linking the virtual to the actual. We're gonna engineer the actual with the virtual. We're gonna press a button. Real world stuff is gonna happen. Gears will grind. Pervasive computing. We're armed with it. It's in our pockets. It's in our purses. We're penetrating the world with our phones and our pods and our wands. <laughs> the internet of things. We're taking the internet and we're spreading it like butter right through the logistical system. We're like introducing a dot-com boom right into Walmart shelves. We're gonna revolutionize commercial logistics. Calm technology. We don't look at the screen. We don't touch the keyboard. It's there, it knows we're here. <laughs> Augmented reality. We've tagged it, we've annotated it, we've put a screen between it and us. Consensual imaging. I've got a screen, you've got a screen, she's got a screen. We're all linking our screens. Now we see the world in a different way. Locative media. It's the grid, the three-dimensional Newtonian grid, saturated with localizers, Machines that know where they are, where they're going. Smart dust. <laughs> Too small to see. Too small to smell. There in uncountable numbers. Spy chips. We didn't put them there. Somebody put them there. Who are those people? Node guano. <laughs> I 
We installed them. They got outdated. They died. Someone's got to sweep them up. You be junk. It was everywhere. It was really hot back in 2009. That was 10 years ago. How in the hell do we garner that up? How do we get that to the recycler? Well, this seems like a kind of wonderland of overlapping and disparate words. And I think they're going to be fought out in a new kind of ground and a new kind of semantic battlefield, what I like to call web semantics. And I was talking to a professor at Harvey Mudd University last week who told me an anecdote that kind of was my tipping point in this regard. He said he'd been dividing up his science and engineering students into two groups, the Baby Huey group and the John Henry group. And the John Henry group had to go hit the books old style. They actually had to go into the library and cite the fully approved engineering texts and uh, you know, uh, uh, full-scale, deeply edited encyclopedias, and were forbidden to use the internet to derive any knowledge about technology. Whereas the other group, the Baby Huey group, was actually forbidden to go into the university, into the university library, could not access any ink on paper, had to go forge out into the internet and merely make do with whatever Wikipedia bizarreness and you know, bizarre blogger blither that they could find. <laughs> Um, and he had to stop the experiment because the baby Hueys were wiping the floor with the John Henrys. It was simply no contest. It is no contest. And what we're hearing here with this list of synonyms is a little culture war within web semantics. Whatever is happening there, whatever we're going to call it, is going to be thrashed out on the web through its own electronic discourse. And I hope to be there. So thank you. <laughs>